Welcome traders to another Tick Mill Weekly Market Outlook for week commencing the 4th of October with me, Patrick Mumbley. Uh, the dollar has uh, recently pushed to the highs of the year as both central bankers and traders reassess both the transitory nature of inflation and what central bankers plan to do about it. Driving that reassessment, particularly in the US, has been the hawkish set of Fed dots and surging energy prices. I think the move in short-term US interest rates has played a major role in the recent dollar strength. Both those themes will be the spotlight this week. The first is whether Friday's non-farm payrolls report uh, is enough to keep the Fed on track to announce tapering in April and on track to tighten in late 2022. I think probably so. The second is whether OPEC uh, increases supply on Monday by 400,000 barrels per day. Uh, again, I think in this area they probably will, but rampaging gas prices look like they can keep the energy complex bid for a while longer and the inflation scare front and centre. From a technical perspective, the dollar index, as it continues to show weakness below the 94.40 level, I'm looking for a three-wave corrective move back into uh, this 93 handle. And then from there, I'd be looking to deploy long positions to target a test at the pivotal 95 level. In the Eurozone, it's, uh, it's noteworthy that inflation pushed up to 3.4% year over year in September and core 1.9%. The European Central Bank had expected higher inflation, but not this high. So far, the doves have been happy to ascribe higher inflation to transitory factors and warn against any overreaction. This week, uh, we will hear from a bunch of ECB speakers, including Core Doves, Lagarde and Lane. Plus, we get the to see the minutes of the September ECB meeting where a recalibration of PEP was announced. Normally, these minutes are quite... Uh, tepid and rarely prompt a market reaction, but they will be under more scrutiny now, especially since some members were already concerned that inflation forecasts were too low. On the data front, we should get to see a broader look at the October PMI releases and some investor sentiment indicators. This week, we'll also see how the dovish ECB stacks up against other central banks in Europe. As usual, the Czech National Bank took no prisoners with a 75 basis point hike on Thursday. Uh, the week focuses uh, to Poland, where an inherently double central bank could be faced with some inflation 7% year over year and a policy rate of 0.1%. From a technical perspective, the euro dollar has, uh, has extended through the equality objective at 116.28. We didn't see any momentum divergence on that low. So what I'm looking for is a three-wave corrective move now back into the 117.50 area to set short positions uh, with a downside objective now at 114.30 before we may see a more sustained recovery in the euro. Uh, Japan's next prime minister will be Fumo Kishida seem to be very much a continuity candidate and a subscriber to the Japanese yen negative economics. The negative field to the yen at the moment is added to by the surge in energy prices. Japan's terms of trade are moving sharply in the wrong direction and we should shortly see uh, in the Japanese current account deteriorating as trade deficits erode uh, the traditional net income surplus. Um, interestingly, the yen gained little from a difficult equity environment in September. October is uh, typically a slightly better month for equities, November even better still. So softer yen may well persist. From a technical perspective, we got that key test of the trend line resistance, 112.30, and uh, saw some supply come into the market. What I'm looking for now is a hold of this 110.80, the monthly pivot, as an opportunity to set long positions, looking for that test of 113. And from there, we may see a more uh, significant correction. In the UK, uh, GBP volatility has been picking up markedly since September and is now back to levels last seen in July. The market seems a little unsure how to trade sterling on this energy story and early fears of stagflation. 
Bad for activity, but good in the sense that it makes the Bank of England tighten earlier. For the shorter term, I think uh, the favour uh, for the dollar is technically there is as much a case of multi-day move in cable to that 132 and then we've got resistance just above at 136. Given that the market now prices a 10 basis point hike at the November BOE meeting and another 50 basis points in 2022, the market will hang on the BOE's every word. Uh, here Dave Ramsden speaks on Tuesday. Ramsden is a hawk and recently voted to end BOE bond buying early. Let's see if he pours any more oil on the fire of early BOE tightening. From a technical perspective, like I say, the 136 is our resistance. I'm watching for bearish reversal patterns here to set short positions, targeting an equality objective, a C wave low here, into 133.30. From there, we can expect a more sustained pullback in terms of sterling. Last but not least, the Aussie. Um, I think next week's Reserve Bank of Australia rate announcements has a fairly low surprise potential. The bank announced it will keep its tools frozen until February 2022, which should leave most of the focus on the financial stability concerns ahead of the semi-annual financial stability review on October the 8th. Housing affordability should be a central theme in this sense. Any indications the RBA will step in with macro prudential tools to curb housing inflation may help keep the current forward guidance that no hikes will be needed before 2024. In the assessment of the economic outlook, the RBA is likely to welcome the easing of COVID restrictions in Australia, but should refrain from sounding materially more optimistic, considering the risks of financial turmoil and economic slowdown in China and the strictly related drop in iron ore prices. Markets are pricing in a mere 12 basis points of tightening in the next year, which, despite being more hawkish than the RBA's forward guidance, is still quite conservative when compared to peer central banks. I doubt there's much more room uh, for such timid tightening expectations to be scaled back and be translated into Aussie weakness. Evergrande and global risk sentiments are likely to overshadow any post-RBA move. Australia's position as natural gas and coal importer may partly shield the Aussie from risk sentiment hits as energy prices remain elevated. So from a technical perspective, what we're looking for here now is... Uh, Bearish reversal patterns at monthly pivots, which comes in at 72.92. Uh, if we get those, we want to be looking on the short side, ultimately looking for a move down to test the pivot or the year pivot, sorry, uh, 69.91. At this stage, it would take a close back above descending trend line resistance here, 73.70, to get more constructive on Aussie upside. And that concludes the weekly market outlook for week commencing the 4th of October. As always, traders plan the trade, trade the plan. Most importantly, manage your risk. Until next time, thanks very much.